Hello everyone, Rob Chastner here. In many of the Bible study classes that I have led over the past 10 years, uh, one thing that I have discovered is that the Old Testament is translated from Hebrew into English in the case of the Bibles that I read and study from. And of course, uh, the New Testament in Hebrew and Greek translated into English. However, what I've noticed is that names, like names of people in the scripture, or names of cities in the scripture, are not translated, they're transliterated. Well, what does that mean? Transliterated means that, let's say, an original word like Bethlehem is a compound Hebrew word, but it's spelled in English the way it sounds in Hebrew. And yet, it has a meaning, it has a translation. All names have translations. And so when I lead Bible study classes and I come to a word that was transliterated rather than translated, I like to translate that word so that people understand what that name or word means. And what that does is it gives you a better understanding of Scripture. So... Um, kind of reminds me years ago when I was a little boy and I would hear my grandparents and great aunts and uncles speaking uh, and uh, they would blurt out words in Yiddish so that uh, the kids couldn't understand what they were saying. Um, but in any event, in the Bible, it's translated except for the names. And so there's something very important. So when I'm leading Bible study classes, Essentially, like when we come to the word Bethlehem, as I mentioned earlier, that's a compound Hebrew word. Beth or bet meaning house and lechem meaning bread, house of bread. So Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, was born in Bethlehem and he is known as the bread of life. And it would be important to understand that he was he chose to be born in the city that's called the house of bread. Um, Melchizedek, as an example, uh, Melech, and Tzadik is the compound Hebrew word for Melchizedek. Melech is king, and Tzadik is righteous, so righteous king. And we know that Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, uh, came from uh, uh, the line of the righteous king. See, so when you see what the names mean, then, in fact, you can understand better what Scripture is. So, what I've done today, prepared today for this video, is to uh, understand what the names from Adam all the way to the name of Noah, all of the uh, generations that were born from Adam to Noah, what those names mean, and uh, we'll discover not only what the names mean, but we'll also discover that God, in his infinite wisdom, placed a story or another secret that was hidden in the Bible. And remember, Deuteronomy chapter 29, 29 shows that God, being sovereign, keeps secrets from us in the Bible and scriptures and only reveals those when we are ready to receive that secret to have understanding of that of that scripture so here we're going to find something interesting so let's start out with the name Adam Adam means man Adam had a son Seth Seth means appointed these are uh, translations of what the name means then we have Enosh Enosh means mortal and then we have Canaan means sorrow. And we have Mahalalel, the blessed God. Anytime you see a name that has E-L, like Samuel, Mahalalel, 
the L part is a representation of God. It's an interpretation of God. So Mahalalel means the blessed God. Then we have Jared. Jared means shall come down. Enoch, teaching. Methuselah, the death shall bring. Uh, interestingly enough, let me find my notes here. <clears throat> um, Methuselah, know, knowing that he was the oldest man in the Bible, uh, but the word means death, the name, I'm sorry, death shall bring. And then Lamech, Lamech. Um, the despairing and the name Noah, rest or comfort. And so there you have, uh, and I'll put those up on the screen or I'll put those in the information box below so that you can keep those. Um, so essentially what we have here is that from Adam all the way through to Noah, we have uh, the generations of names, and then all of the names, rather than transliterate transliteration and reading them just as a name, they have a meaning. And so let's see what message, what hidden message might there be given to us by God through these generations. Man has appointed moral, sorry, mortal sorrow. But the blessed God shall come down teaching, and his death shall bring the despairing comfort. Isn't that interesting? That the names from Adam to Noah, instead of transliterating and just saying those names the way they sound in Hebrew, if we were to translate them, and know what those names mean, we have a little story. Again, man has appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching, and his death shall bring the despairing comfort. I hope that this short message motivates those who are viewing this video to open up a concordance uh, do a little bit of research. When you're reading scripture and there's a name in there, realize that the name is transliterated. It's spelled in English the way it sounds in the original language of Hebrew or Greek. Look up what that name actually means, is translated to. And then place those words, the translation, back into the scripture so that you can see and understand fully God's message in Scripture. Again, I hope this is helpful. Thank you for viewing.